What's up guys and welcome to the Texas Fishing Force. If you're new here, I'm Mike. Now today I, I want to start something different, something new and different. Uh, see, over the past week I have been um, checking out a lot of other fishing YouTube channels and I've been watching a lot of those guys catch some just amazing fish. And then I went back and I watched my videos, some of my really old videos. And by the way, 10 out of 10, don't recommend that at all. Some of those videos, they're bad. They're really, really bad. But during that, what I realized is that watching other people catch fish, well, it gets boring really, really fast, even watching myself. And over the few, last few weeks, I've done a lot of marsh fishing. And uh, even during the editing process, I realized this is just boring after you watch someone catch, you know, five and six and 10 redfish over and over again. It's, you know, some of that is entertaining and amusing, but after a while it's, yeah, it's just boring. So what I do want to do is I want to change things up. I'm still going to do some of those fishing videos in the future and show you some of the uh, fishing that I'm doing, but we all come to YouTube for the same reason. Um, I know based on the views and what all of you guys like, that most of you are here on YouTube and watching these fishing videos for entertainment and information. Um, the tips and the techniques and the tricks and all of that just to gain value out of the videos. And watching someone else catch fish is just boring. It's, it's not fun and um, there's no value in that. So I do want to change that up. I'm going to do some fishing videos in the future, but I think from now on what I'm going to try to do rather than just showing you guys videos of me catching fish, I want to add something to that. I want to, you know, do a lesson or, or some information or really cover specific topics and talk about the, the, you know, what I'm looking for out on the water and some of those techniques that I'm using to find fish and why I pick certain locations, why I'm picking certain lures and colors and that during certain conditions and really give you guys information while I'm on the water or what's going through my head while I'm out there. And so that's what we're gonna start with today, some kayak marsh fishing 101. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. Kayak Marsh Fishing 101. Now, the best tips that I can give you for um, marsh fishing when you're first starting out is this, to be slow and quiet. Uh, those things are really, really important. Now, when I'm out on the kayak, I cover a lot of ground, generally five to 10 miles in a day. So it's not like you're going slow the entire time, but anytime I'm heading through the marsh, I'm generally moving, and then when I get to areas that I really like, maybe I see, bait or uh, birds dropping or uh, water movement that I really like, that's when I'm stopping and I'm moving really, really slow. Uh, and then I fish that area. And then if I you know, get on fish, great. If I don't, then I get to move in again. But you wanna be, while you're fishing, moving really, really slow. I see people all the time that are actively fishing and they are flying through the marsh. They are in a hurry to nowhere. Uh, I, I don't really know what they're doing now. With that being said, there are times that you want to get back into the marsh as fast as you possibly can. Um, maybe it's the weather conditions or just some information that you have that you know that those fish are going to be pushed way back into the marsh. Well, times like that, I, I do. I, I, I try to get back as far as I possibly can, as fast as I can. However, I'm almost always fishing on the way. So when I stop to, to fish, I'm moving really, really slowly and I'm being very, very quiet. Uh, when it comes to noise, you do want to be quiet, but that doesn't mean that you need to sit there and whisper and be really, really quiet. No, your normal voice is good. It's it. You're not going to uh, really affect those fish by talking normally. I've, I've done it many, many times. I've been talking through the camera and looked down and seen a redfish two or three feet from the kayak. Uh, your voice isn't going to spook them like a lot of people think um, it will. You can, you can talk normal, I promise. Um, but, you don't want to be yelling and you don't want to be screaming and making tons and tons of noise. You can do that once you catch the fish. You can yell and scream as much as you want, but you do want to stay quiet. The biggest thing is you don't want to make a lot of noise 
that is going to travel through the water. So uh, you don't want to be dropping tools in your kayak that is actively hitting the kayak and making all of that noise. Um, you're pedaling and you're paddling. That makes a lot of noise. Generally, when I'm coming up to an area that I want to fish, I'm moving up to that spot. I'm paddling all the way there and then I'm just drifting, I'm drifting the rest of the way. I don't want to paddle at all because any noise and any movement in the water can spook those fish. So I want to move very, very slowly. I want to be very, very quiet. Uh, lastly, there is nothing in the water that is going to make more noise than your kayak hitting oyster. Um, I can pretty much guarantee if you hit oyster with your kayak, you can pretty much count that area off in probably a hundred yards in every direction that there aren't going to be fish there. You're going to spook them. It is extremely loud. Um, that scraping noise, I mean, it's loud outside your kayak. It's definitely loud inside the water. So uh, you definitely want to avoid that. I've done it. Not my best moments at all, but you want to be quiet. Um, you don't want to be pedaling a lot. You don't want to be pedaling while you're actively fishing. Just kind of drift through that area, stay quiet, move slowly, and then keep on going. All right, next is you want to be casting parallel to the grass lines as you're moving through the marsh. Um, that makes complete sense. It, it almost seems obvious if you're in a narrow channel, you want to be casting with the direction that you're going uh, through this channel. However, as that opens up and you're in wider and wider area, I see it all the time. People will sit on the grass lines and then cast perpendicular across. The problem with that is you're missing a lot of area, especially if you're moving through that channel. Um, you're missing a lot of spots and you know, you're limiting, you know, the area that you're covering. If you're casting parallel along the direction that you're going, well, you're just covering a lot more water in way less time. So you can hit that area much quicker and you're, because you're covering more water, you have more chances of hooking up the, beyond that, you can get the lure out farther away from you if you're casting perpendicular well, you need the fish to be a lot closer to see that and then you are risking spooking that fish because they're too close to you or you're making too much noise or any of that. So your best bet is to cast parallel along the grass lines away from you, pull it in a much longer distance and you're gonna hook up more. Now, there are a few things that you're going to want to look for while you're in the marsh that are going to have a higher concentration of fish. They're going to increase your odds of catching fish and that is oyster, water movement, grass lines, and drop-offs. Uh, yeah, all of those things, that's what I'm looking for when I'm in the marsh, uh, beyond looking for, you know, bait and birds and the normal things that work anywhere. While I'm in the marsh, I am looking for uh, those specific things, uh, especially oyster. I'm looking for oyster every time I'm, I'm in the marsh because there is a, the entire ecosystem that works around oyster. Uh, you have the oyster there, you have a lot of the bait fish that are feeding on that, you have the predator fish that are coming by and feeding on the bait fish. There's just a lot going on. You have the crabs that are running in and out, tons and tons of, of bait and bigger fish, and those predator fish are going to come through and they, they're just going to sit on that oyster and feed all day. Even last week I had, I don't know, four or five redfish that I caught in, you know, less than a foot of water that were in the oyster, those redfish were just running up and down the edges of, of the oyster. And so that's what I did. I cast along that edge of the oyster. I pulled my lure back and it, it seemed almost back to back catching redfish. Um, they were they were there, they were all in there and they were feeding on all of that bait. And it's really, really easy to find bigger predator fish if you can find that oyster. Now, obviously uh, the entire marsh is lined with grass lines and so it's a little bit hard to you know, look for that. But what I'm really looking for is patches of grass lines that are kind of uh, islands throughout the marsh. A lot of, of those big fish, a lot of those redfish are going to hang around those and, and find, you know, bait fish that, and, and some of that small shrimp and a lot of that stuff that kind of goes and hides in those grass. Um, those are good spots to stop. You know, really, really work those grass lines and those edges and those, you know, patches of grass that are sticking out in the middle of the marsh great spot for uh, catching redfish and flounder. Now, the last thing that I keep my eye on is water movement. I like water movement. Uh, generally in the marsh, you'll see that most of your water is moving at the same speed, but there's going to be some areas as you're coming around corners and things like that, where the current is just moving at a much higher or lower speed. It's just going. And that's really where I 
like to fish. I like to see that high water movement um, that are pushing around points and pushing around corners. I will stop and fish there for 30, 40 minutes um, because it is just a good spot for bait to be getting pushed and pulled out of the grass. And a lot of that bait is moving around there and you will see redfish constantly just moving up and down that feeding. And it's just a great, great spot. That's what I like to see in the marsh. I like to see that water movement. I like to see oyster. I like to see all of those things. And it just makes this combination. And you know exactly where to stop in the marsh uh, to increase your chances of catching fish. So when I'm seeing any of those things, that's where I am stopping. I'm going to fish for a little while. If I don't catch anything, then I'm moving on to the next uh, big thing, whether it be, you know, another area where water's moving or maybe I'm moving up on some more uh, shell, uh, all of those things, that's what I'm looking for. All right guys, well that is it for today. I hope these uh, tips help you out. Uh, like I said, I will be doing more of these in the future where I'm actually on the water rather than explaining it in this room. Um, but we're, I'm really going to try to make every new fishing trip where I'm actually on the water more of a lesson. Um, give you guys a little bit more information and some technical stuff and some techniques and tips and anything I can and give you my thoughts and all of that while I'm on the water. Uh, but um, this is to start it off. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Send me an email. Leave me a comment below. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe. But thank you guys again for watching. Uh, I truly appreciate every single one of you and we'll see you next time.